Vanessa Redgrave, and she'll be with us at 11.25. Now, serial killers are always headline grabbers. But what drives a man or a woman to murder repeatedly? To try to answer those questions, we're joined now by criminologist Colin Wilson. Good morning to you. Good morning. morning. Colin, who invented the term, actually, serial killer? A man called Robert Ressler in the late 1970s. Mm. He was um, a member of this team at Quantico, which you may remember in Silence of the Lambs. Yes. The, the yes. FBI team. Mm. What and makes a serial killer different from a mass murderer, then? Oh, um, simply that serial killers tend to kill one person after another. A mass murderer might kill a lot of people together. But secondly, it's all sexual. Mass murderers might be like Landru, you know, the French poisoner who <coughs> killed women for money. But serial mm. killers tend to be sexual. Sex it's, it's nearly always sexual, yeah. OK, you've written loads of books on this sort of thing. Why the fascination for you? Ooh, I suppose, because when I was a little boy, my dad brought home a book from work which had um, all these murderers in, and he told us not to read it, so of course we did. Yeah. And um, all of them had a picture of the murderer at the head of the article, all except one, the one on Jack the Ripper, which had a huge black question mark. Mm. So this got me terribly interested, especially as my grandfather had been in Whitechapel at the time of the Ripper murders, and they kept him indoors at night in case, you know, he got uh, killed by Jack the Ripper. God. So I was always fascinated by Jack the Ripper, and my first novel, mm. written in the 1950s, was about a killer based on Jack but, the Ripper. But I mean, it's not just you. We're all fascinated by murder mysteries, maybe the mystery side of it, but, mm. but there is some gruesome fascination we've all got in murder. Why? I mean, you actually feel guilty for reading some of the details sometimes. I suppose so. I mean, the Elizabethans used to be the same. They used to go along to watch people being hanged and then buy pamphlets about their lives. But also, I think, it's due to the fact that when you see somebody really involved in some horrible murder and about to be hanged or go to prison for life, you have this sort of feeling, thank God that's not me. And you suddenly get a feeling of the value of your own life, which very right, frequently what, what, you don't get. Right, let, let's see a few examples of people that, um, you know, have hit the headlines for uh, a series of murders they've committed. Here we are, for instance, this is uh, Beverly Allett, isn't it? Here, can you see that? It's just behind you. There you are. Yeah. Um, now, what, what sort of made her into a serial killer? Well, that's a completely different type of thing. She's not really a serial killer in our sense of the word because um, she did it out of a desire for attention. She had yes. this kind of syndrome called um, Munchausen syndrome, which yes. means that, you know, you badly want to be noticed all the time. Oh, I see. So, in effect, you're sort of, um, you feel inferior and you're trying to tell the world that you are someone. And, in fact, this does apply to a lot of serial killers, nevertheless. Um, particularly since the 60s, you've got a kind of self-esteem killer. Um, there was a boy called Robert Smith who took a lot of women to a beauty parlour in Arizona, made them lie on the floor and shot them all in the back of the head. When asked why he'd done it, he said, I wanted to become known to get myself a name. Mm. They have this feeling, we deserve to be known. OK, let's see uh, Ian Brady and uh, Mara Hindley. Mm. A picture of them there now. Well, what do you say about them? What was their motivation? Well, that, that's a very curious syndrome. Um, I call those duo murders. <coughs> what happens is you get a high-dominance person and a medium-dominance person they're perfectly harmless, separate, but when you put them together, it's like putting nitric acid and glycerin together and making an extremely dangerous kind of bond. So you're not saying they were necessarily evil on their own or wouldn't have gone so far yeah, on no, their own? left alone. If fate had decreed that they should before. never meet, those yep. murders might not have happened. Those murders would not have happened. Oh, that's yep. extraordinary. John Christie is another. Tell us about him. Well, he's basically a sex murderer. Mm. And, of course, um, the fact was that he couldn't have sex with a woman if she was sort of wide awake and so on. So what he had to do was to knock them out with coal gas. Mm. And afterwards, he was um, forced to kill them. This, this Go on. It, it's simply a new kind of syndrome. You see, sex crime only began in the 19th century, believe it or not. Surely not. Surely yeah. it's always been there. No, it hasn't well, always causing, been there. What's causing it? Um, uh, you, with the Jack the Ripper murders in 1888 were the first sex crimes in our modern, se modern sense of the word. They just did not exist before that because oh, wow. you people don't killed for economic actually. motives, not for sex. In the Victorian age, you could sort of pick a prostitute up for sixpence. You know, there wasn't need to murder for sex in that way. So it just didn't so exist. So are you saying that the sexual murder may be a, a phase that we might go through? Yep, society? absolutely. And sex murder has lasted from 1888 down until um, today. But you've got a new type of murder now, which began in the 1960s, and that's what I was just talking about, the self-esteem killer. Yeah, the attention the killer. Alley you're it's about. often mingled with sex, but it's basically a, a craving for attention. That must be because of the modern media, mustn't it? It must be something to do with the fact that, the, that if you murder, you make huge headlines, you're, you're the subject of television documentaries. People even mm. come to the jail nowadays and want to interview you, don't they? <laughs> this, this has always been happening, though. Don't forget, Jack the Ripper wrote lots of letters to the police and so have serial killer after serial killer because, in a sense, they want to be noticed. They want what to about Jeffrey Dahmer? I mean, he's uh, had a grotesque sort of uh, catalogue of killings as well. What category does he fit into? He's rather interesting simply because his parents were middle class and all serial killers so far have been working class for some weird reason, mainly because, you know, the pressures that cause a serial killer are something that start in childhood. But Dahmer, of course, was obsessed by dead things. He picked this up when he was fairly young and uh, was interested in dissecting animals. Uh, 
sexually frustrated, utterly miserable with his family. His mother and father fought like cat and dog all through his childhood. He was ignored by his parents and so on and so forth. And so finally, this kind of explosion. Um, actually, the, the crimes, in a sense, weren't basically sexual. But yes. what turns a lovable, beautiful child, or baby at least, when, presumably when they were babies, they were innocent, beautiful babies. They're a blank yeah. canvas then. Yeah, in this what context, turns them into they? a murderer? Don't forget, very often. In these cases of serial killers, they're people who've had lousy childhoods. Um, very often, for example, they had bad blows on the head. The number of serial killers who had brain damage through bad blows on the head is enormous. They've often been sexually assaulted as children. They've often had a really lousy upbringing, half-starved and so, so on. So you don't think a murderer is born? Um, no, although there's often a predisposition there, I'm pretty sure. Mm. A weakness, a, maybe, that yeah, then it there's a, there's happens a, later in life. There's a kind of... No, no, it's a, almost, you might say, a basic nastiness about some of these people. Okay, well, Colin, thank you very much, and good luck with your new book, A Plague of Murder. Thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Thank Thanks.